A few weeks ago, I came across this incredible frame from this Janelle Monae music video. She's like laying on this futuristic platform floating in the air. And I was thinking, yo, this would be really fire to do for this music video that I'm currently planning to have him floating. It wouldn't be that hard to do. We can do it fast. We can do it quick. Peek in the air, perform from the side, wobble his legs, whatever. Then we put the green screen over top of the table. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's pain, pain, pain. The idea was there. We just can't execute it. This happens to me every single time that I wanna take the green screen or take a backdrop outside, period. The wind blows it over. We got sandbags on our stuff too. It's still blowing the hell over. And everything's waving in the wind and the chair's blowing over and it's ripping. It's over with. We just, I don't know, I can't execute this idea. I gotta figure it out some kind of other way or I don't know. <laughs> Let me tell you, I was tripping because this actually turned out to be one of the most stressful and hardest things that I've ever done in a music video. From pre-production to being on set, to VFX, to color grading, to export, this is how I created this music video from start to finish. This pre-production is very light, so I wanna keep it brief. It's not too much here, just a mood board with a couple different inspirations and a lot of different project ideas. Whenever I'm starting a project, I like to just jot out anything that comes to my mind and then from there, I'll be able to take the stuff away that I can actually do or the things that I actually wanna do. A couple things in here that are like big standouts are floating in a chair, slow motion performances. Now, when I wrote down slow motion performances, what I meant by this is having the performance be in slow motion, but having the artist's lips still be on sync with the song. I do this by speeding the song up to around 150% inside of my editing program. So I'll drop that into a timeline, speed it up to 150%, then I'll export out that MP3 file. I'll save it into Milano, and then when we're on set, I'll have the artist perform that at the 150%, and I'll film it at 36 frames per second. I put up a diagram so it all makes sense. I know it sounds a little bit confusing, but it's actually a really simple concept. So that's that. The floating in the chair thing was something that I wanted to do because the concept in him singing in the song is, is about floating spirit. Anyway, so my mood board looks like this. These are a couple of different frame inspirations that I pulled from other music videos that I feel give me the same vibe or just music videos and films that I just love. Even some random images that I pulled from Instagram. Originally, I was gonna have this entire music video be black and white, but the floating shots and a couple of the other shots were very, very distracting with the background and him being a subject that was very clashing with the black and white color scheme so it just didn't really work so that's why uh it's not black and white but that's pre-production though super light nothing over the top nothing super detailed just some ideas to keep me from being stuck on set What's good guys, welcome back to the channel. This is gonna be a BTS and I'm excited because we're doing some really, really fun stuff in this one. We're gonna do green screen, we're gonna be shooting some stuff out, we're gonna be shooting some stuff in the garage. It's gonna be a lot of really cool stuff happening. First things first, man, be in the garage. Uh, the first couple of setups will be in here. We're gonna be doing the green screen stuff in here. So I gotta block out these windows. I got some black trash bags and some gas tape. I'm just gonna tape these all around these windows so we can get a solid black space to use artificial light and not have no color shifts even though this video might be monochrome but <laughs> i'm gonna figure that out folks man let's get to it All right, we got the first setup done and I uh, just kind of want to walk you through the lights and talk a little bit more about them. The key light that we're using, we're using it in a backlight space because once we do the green screen stuff in post, I want to have it like a light's coming from behind him so we don't want it super frontal. But this light is the Nanlite Forza B2. Uh, we got the Nanlite uh, Parabolic Softbox 150 on here, super big. We want to light him as a whole so when we go in and do the green screen stuff in post, 
we don't have anything spotty. The backlight light is the Force 300 B2. We got it inside of a soft box with a uh, grid on it, so that light is going straight to the background. He's very dark in the scene, but it's gonna make sense once we do the post stuff. So uh, let's run through the scene, let's get it started. Uh, in terms of camera, we're using the C70 with the 16 to 35 millimeter F2.8 lens. We're gonna shoot this on sticks, do a couple different performances, and then in post we'll do all the cool stuff. Packing up to head out to the next scene, but it's raining and it's windy as hell. And I'm trying to think through this green screenshot that I want to do next. But I know the wind is going to be a huge problem with a paper backdrop, so we're just kind of trying to wait the wait out, wait the wait, yeah, yeah, wait the rain out. Let's see what happens. Now let's quickly talk about this green screenshot that I wanted to get of him floating. I want to address a couple of things before we get into the behind the scenes, or just kind of talk about some things because. I know some questions are gonna spark up of why you didn't do this way, why didn't you do this? So let me just talk about it before you even, you know, type it down in the comments. First things first, why didn't I just shoot him sitting in a chair on the green screen and take out the whole aspect of the chair leaning backwards? Well, when it comes to actually showing somebody floating in the air, their feet need to actually be in the air. If we had him sitting just like regular in a chair, his feet would be on the ground and it would look incredibly fake already. So. I needed to get his feet off of the ground and I had a different solution to this at first. I was initially gonna bring my chair, then I was gonna bring this plastic table, then I was gonna put the plastic chair on the plastic table. He was gonna be sitting off the ground, his feet would be dangling, but he wouldn't be leaning backwards. Then in post, what we're gonna do is I was just gonna lean him back and then we just have that perspective that way. But in order for you to actually show that somebody's in the air, you need to have their feet off the ground. It's not gonna look realistic if his feet are just sitting on the ground because they won't be dangling. You need that effect of like his hands kind of waving in the wind and his legs kind of just waving as well. Now the next thing is, why didn't we just shoot the green screen stuff in the studio, go down the street, shoot the clean plate, then throw the green screen shot inside of the, green, uh, the clean plate? This is actually a valid question. And honestly, if I were to do it again, that's probably what I would do because we had so much trouble doing it down the street. And then the lighting also ended up not actually matching as well. But the reason why I didn't do it in the studio is because I didn't know where the sun was gonna be, which means I wasn't gonna know how to light the shot to match the clean plate. So that was my whole reason. I figured if we shot it quick down the street, we can shoot the green screen shot of him in the scene, take the green screen out, shoot the plate, it'll match perfectly color lighting wise and I wouldn't have to do too much tweaking when it came to the color grading process. So that's that. All right, boom. Okay, so we back a couple weeks later. We trying this green screen shot again. We got a different philosophy on how we're gonna do it this time though. So look, what we're gonna do this time is, see we got Tino back there. We got the chair, we're gonna lean the chair up on the weight bench and then we're gonna put the green paper on top of the weight bench and under him so we can mask that out in post. And then hopefully this works this time. It's not windy and also we won't have to raise the green screen as high as we did last time, which will prevent some of that wind. Hopefully it'll work. So we got the performance. Now we're gonna move all the green screen stuff out of the shot and then shoot a clean slate, clean frame. So then in post, I can mask him into it and do the movement adjustments like he's cool.
So this is a look at my timeline. It's kind of scrambled, to edit a little bit weird. Final Cut is not the best when it comes to editing music video just because it doesn't have a specific layer based um, editing. You gotta kind of make your own thing when it comes to Final Cut, but this is what the timeline look like. With the VFX, it's a lot going on here. And I'm gonna break it down just so y'all can kind of see what's going on and get a scope of how this is actually working out. But first things first, when it comes to this entire green screen composition for these shots, the first thing that I had to do was find a doorway or at least make a doorway. I had to make like a mock doorway. I was gonna go on Photoshop and just make something that looked similar to what I was trying to do. And then from there, I was just gonna figure it out. So what I did was I pulled a frame from the music video, brought that into Photoshop, and then I just cut him out of the frame. And then from there, I just made a rectangle shape that was like a doorway. Um, grabbed the pen tool, made like a shape that replicated uh, the light coming out of the doorway onto a platform like the ground. Um, and I did a little bit of tweaking with this. I added a blur to it just to kind of fade it out, make it look a little bit more smooth. And then I just faded it out at the bottom. So it was just a clean uh, shape. Saved that as a PNG and then I brought that into Final Cut. And it looks rough. It looks very rough as is, but the effects and the things that I added to it is what made it work. So this is a look at my composition of one of my green screen um, shots. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn these layers off and then I'm just gonna go by them one by one so you can understand what's happening here. First things first, we got the doorway. And the first thing that I had to do with this doorway is that I had to add a blur to it. I had to add a focus blur and I also had to add a Gaussian blur just to not make it look so sharp. If we take these effects off, you can see that this is just a really sharp looking doorway and it does not look cool. It doesn't even look like a doorway. It just looks like a shape at that point. So. Um, once we add these effects to it, this is what really make it. That's the doorway. It looks janky still, I get it. It, it still looks janky, but once we add this stuff on top of it is when it will actually start to look like something cool. The next thing that I did was I added a couple assets from the In Music Video 2 pack. This is my pack collaborating with uh, Motion VFX. Make sure you guys check it out if you haven't already. It's a ton of good stuff in here, but um, I just decided to use these assets to make this come to life. So the first thing I added was the film emulation. Um, this right here just uh, adds like some grain to the overall shot, just to the background. It adds a nice bloom to it and it makes it not as sharp. It makes it look like it's light actually coming from the doorway. You know, when you turn it off and on, you can see that that's doing a big thing for us. That's, that's a big difference. Next thing is diffusion, just further adding to that diffused look, just further adding to that bloom from the, um, the doorway so it's not as sharp. We want it to look like it's a little bit of haze and smoke coming from it. And we actually do add some haze and smoke to it in a second, which we'll see. Next thing is the actual green screen clip itself. So when we turn the effects off, this is what the green screen shot look like. Basically what we have to do is just add a green screen key here and just adjust this a ton. There's so many different things you could do on a green screen key. You gotta move some of these sliders to get it to look smooth and clean. I uh, also have a shape mask on here too, um, just to mask out all the additional stuff around the green screen, like the lights you can still see in the scene right there. So we added a shape mask to that. And then I added in a drop shadow to make it look like the light was coming from behind him to kind of just cast onto the ground. Still looks janky, but once we add all this stuff again, it, it starts to come together. We also got a color wheel on here too for the black and white and uh, just a curve right there to just bring the tones down a little bit, make it look a, more, a little bit more dramatic. If we zoom into the shot right here, you can see that he has holes in his shoes. This was something that I could not get right. I'm horrible at green screen. If you got some tips, let me know. Um, so what I had to do was I had to duplicate the clip and then I had to uh, create a mask to just to fill in that, um, that right there at the bottom. Next thing I did was I added another black layer with a shape mask on it just to extend that shadow out a little bit more, make it look a little bit more realistic. Um, but that's the mask right there. It still looks a little janky, but once we get into a little bit more of the effects that we added to it, it'll all make sense and it'll all feel cohesive. The next thing that I added was just a little bit of spice to the shot to just really amp it up. I feel like these things really made the shot cool. So the first thing is uh, the smoke overlay right here. And this is from Storyblocks, who just so happens to be the sponsor of today's video. What I decided to do with this is, um, I just decided to drop this into uh, the scene and it looks like it's smoke coming from the doorway. I have another layer of this, which I'll show you in a second, but Storyblocks is awesome because not only did I download that, I downloaded a couple different other assets that um, I could just try and test out. And that's the really good thing about Storyblocks is when you have an unlimited uh, subscription, you can download and use as many of these clips as you want in whatever project and whatever way you want. 
you don't have to worry about copyright claims or anything like that. It's all royalty free. So the first clip was a smoke one. I dropped this in, I changed the blending mode to screen, and then I just decided to do a couple different shape masks as well, just to get it to fit where it's supposed to be. I didn't really want it to be like super wild. I had to make it actually feel like it was coming out of the door. So these shape masks just kind of helped tame this uh, smoke overlay a little bit. And I decided to duplicate that and put one over top of them. So it feels like the smoke is coming out of the door and it's also coming in front of them. That's one thing with these illusions that you want to do. You want it to feel like it's not only behind them, but you also want it to feel like it's in front of them as well. So with this layer, I added a couple of different shape masks to this one as well, just to kind of tame it. You know, I didn't really want it everywhere. I also didn't want it to be uh, completely covering his face because what I found is that it was just kind of washing out the scene. So I decided to add a shape mask up here at the top just to kind of fade it out a little bit, you know? And then another thing that I decided to add was uh, this orb motion overlay from Storyblocks as well behind him. And I think that this just adds a magical feel to the scene. Without this, it felt kind of like bland a little bit, you know? And I wanted it to feel like surreal magic. You know, this is something that you're not gonna see all the time. So I decided to add in this orb overlay. And what I did with this is I just decided to change the blending mode of this screen as well. So it fits into the scene. These assets came in handy though. And uh, I feel like this scene right here just wouldn't have worked without these. Again, these are from Storyblocks. Storyblocks is a stock media asset platform that you can get a subscription for to download whatever stock media assets you need. So they have motion backgrounds, they have stock video clips, they have motion titles, they have audio, they have stock photos as well. Storyblocks is just a place to be. And they have thousands, and I mean thousands of different assets that you can try and test out. And for all my green screen work that I do for all my music videos, I use Storyblocks, man. Storyblocks is the place to do it at. And even throughout this video, uh, the background of my titles for the different sections of this video have been from Storyblocks, that film burn. It's fire, right? Came from Storyblocks. So listen, if you need some stock assets for your project, make sure you guys check out Storyblocks. It's gonna be linked down in the description below. Check out the Unlimited, so you can download an unlimited amount of these assets and uh, get your project going because this really spiced up and made this project. So this is what one of my compounds look like. Essentially, I just did that. And then uh, I took all of my other performances from the green screen looks and then I did the exact same thing to them and I compounded those as well. And then I just went through and I rearranged these to be in whatever orientation that I needed. So for this particular shot right here where we have um, kind of like this long hallway feeling of these, I just made some of the compounds a little bit smaller, arranged them, put them into this orientation. And then uh, another thing that I did was I decided to put um, a layer of uh, blur over top of this just so it looks real. If this were an actual hallway, you would have some sort of depth to it. So if you look at it, this one's in focus, this one's in focus, this one's less in focus, and uh, these ones go on and uh, further. The further it is from the camera, obviously the more it will be out of focus. And I just basically did that with the Gaussian blur layer and then I added the shape mask to it and uh, just faded that out. So. That was pretty much that. I had a little bit of mu movement with um, MCAM Rig, which is another motion VFX plugin that is completely free. If you use Final Cut Pro 10, make sure you check it out. It's free, you might as well use it. And uh, I basically just keyframed some movements into this. I did a little bit of fading in and out on this particular clip right here for the different compounds, just so it's cool and it's not boring to look at. Another thing that I forgot to mention, which is probably one of the most important things I'm tripping, is I added some more assets on top of uh, these compositions to really, you know, make these sets of doorways feel more cohesive. So I'm gonna click these layers off so you can see what's happening here as well. Um, first thing is the film emulation from the M Music Video 2 plugin of mine. I decided to add another one of those on top of the entire thing. So it's not only affecting the background now, it's also affecting uh, Jimmy G in the scenes as well. And if I turn that off and on, you can see it's just adding a nice little bit of bloom to it. It's increasing the contrast and it's also making some of that light from the doorway wrap around to him so it makes it feel more uh, believable. I added another layer of diffusion as well so that just further intensifies the bloom and makes it look like the light is actually coming from the doorway. MCAM rig is just um, my motion of choice. You know, I just went through and I actually keyframed a couple of these different movements. And then another thing that I did was I added a base gray layer and just to um, adjust the color. This is just making all the color cohesive in the music video. And then this layer on top right here is that Gaussian blur layer that I was telling you about. So when it comes to the floating scene, this one was a little bit different. It was a little less that I had to do to get the scene to work in terms of um, adding different effects to it. 
first things first, we have this layer right here, which is the actual green screen shot. Um, and this was really just as simple as me dropping in the key here, adjusting the sliders, you know, making it um, actually be keyed out. It's a ton of different sliders. There's no real formula to doing green screen stuff when it comes to keying out. You gotta just really adjust certain stuff to get it to where you need it to be. And I couldn't even really get this to be perfect. It's still a little bit scratchy, um, but I think overall it, did, it does work in the scene. Another thing that I have on this clip is a drop shadow layer, and this is just casting his shadow onto the ground. Once we do the key for that, we need to drop in the plate for this scene. Um, this is the plate right here that I have for the scene. It's just a clean plate, left the tripod, camera, same place after we shot the green screen stuff, and I just shot it to get um, a shot of the background without him in it. So we drop this over top of the, uh, the clean plate. The next thing we need to do is add shadow. So we do have that drop shadow layer um, right here, which is cool and it works, but I wanted to add a little bit more shadow to it just to kind of um, make it feel a little bit more cohesive. So what I did was I dropped in uh, just blank black layer and then I added a shape mask to that, just made it like an oval. And you can see right there, just playing it through. Shadow looks pretty good on the ground. Doesn't look bad. Next thing that I did was I added movement to the green screen shot. So on the side of this compound right here, uh, I just decided to add a handheld effect from the In Music Video 2 plugin. My plugin, my collaboration. Make sure you check it out if you haven't already, shameless plug. But what this does is just adding some movement to him just to make him feel like he's floating a little bit. You know, if I had him there static, it wouldn't really feel like much was happening. So I added one of these handheld layers to it. And, uh, you know, it just adds that floating aesthetic to the shot. And after that, what I decided to do was I added a handheld movement to the background and him floating. So then it feels like the actual shot is moving and not just a still background with him floating. I added another handheld effect over top of him moving. And then I also added in a little bit of zoom in the zoom out keyframe. So this one was way simpler than the other one. It wasn't as many effects. Um, and we also didn't add on heavy grain or film emulation on top of it. And the, uh, the overhead shot was pretty much the exact same process. Keyed him out, added movement to him, then we added movement to him and the background. Now, when it comes to color grading, color grading is one of those things that just take forever. You're just dropping on a bunch of different layers and you're testing a bunch of different things, but I do wanna go through my color grading and just kinda show y'all what's happening with it. Um, and it might be able to inspire a little bit with which I got going on. So typically what I would do is I would name each one of these layers inside of this. I'm using color finale, by the way. But what I'll do is I'll click these on and off just so you can see what's happening with the shot. So uh, this is the shot straight out of the C70. This is with um, a conversion light on top of it. First thing that I did was I decided to add a curve to it um, just to get it to the tonal range that I wanted it to be at. I brought the whites way down. I brought the blacks up a little bit just to get them to a specific spot. Um, and then I added in another curves layer right here, which is not actually doing anything. I don't know why that's there. Next thing is the six vectors. This is just me kind of tweaking the colors a little bit. Um, not all of them. I found that the reds and the, the skin tones weren't really where I wanted them to be. So if I click that on and off, you can see it's kind of bringing down the luminosity a little bit in the skin tones, also dropping the saturation out a little bit. Um, doing a lot with this green right here too in the background. This is making it more um, saturated, just popping it, and that's that. Next thing we got is a HSL curve. And here we got a bunch of different things happening. So if I click that on, you can see I'm pulling out a lot of the blues in the background. Um, and I'm also bringing out um, a lot of that skin tone. So if you click that on and off, you can see what's happening there. Just neutralizing the skin tone out. It looks a little washed right now. A lot of these layers, when I created them, I did them out of order. So it might look washed right now, but once I add in the other stuff, it'll make sense. Next one is uh, a color wheels layer. Um, this is just really um, adding like a warm tone to uh, the highlights. If I click that on and off, you can see what's happening there. The shot was unusually cool. I think I might've shot this with a cooler um, uh, temperature set on the light. So this is just bringing some more warm tones into uh, the whites right there. Uh, this right here is like a focus layer. So this is like a vignette just to kind of draw your eyes into the middle of the frame. Um, you can see right there before and after, that's just drawing your eyes into the middle of the frame right there on him, the subject. And this is where the real color grading is right here. So um, this is a color wheels layer and it has uh, a mask on it. So this right here is just basically masking out his skin. And then we're doing a little bit of adjustments to everything that's not his skin. So 
Once we got that mask on the skin, I went into the mid-tones and I just dragged those to more of a teal or blue tone. I like this because the background is like very gray, so it made this really easy to do to get like a teal and orange gray for it. So that's that right there. Next thing is uh, HSL curve, and this is just bringing out some of those blues from the shadows. I wanted to have like pretty clean shadows, but I realized that once I got them to how clean that I wanted them to be, it didn't really have that teal aesthetic to it. So these next layers are just to kind of intensify, bring out a little bit more of that blue. So this next HSL curve um, right here, just bringing the skin tone down a little bit. And uh, this last, this last law wheel right here is um, neutralizing out those uh, blue tones in the shadows right here. So that's the grade, man. That's the grade right there, before and after. And for the actual music video too, what I did do is uh, I added Cosmo to the shot. I don't have it on for this breakdown because it would totally make the computer and all this process go slow. But um, also had a layer of Cosmo here just to kind of soften up the skin tones a little bit. I like my shots a little bit softer than a lot of people like theirs. I know people like tack sharpness, but for me, some things are just too sharp. So I like to add Cosmo from uh, Magic Bullet and it just softens out those skin tones a lot. Overall, I'm actually really happy with how this music video turned out, but there are a couple things that I would have done differently. So if you're gonna do something similar to this, Take this advice because it will make your project significantly better. The first thing that I would have done differently with this music video after the fact is I would have lowered my key light in the garage scene with the canvas backdrop. Going through the color grading process, I just realized that the key light was just a little bit hot. Obviously, I could have brought it down a little bit in post, but it just didn't have that smooth gradient feel to it. The lighting was still nice and still soft, and it was a really big source. But if it were up to me and I did it again, I would just lower that key light just a tad bit. It's a little bit hotter than I wanted it to be. The second thing that I would have done differently with this music video is I would have raised the shutter speed with the green screen shots. Now, typically that's something that I always do. If you're doing green screen stuff, you should always raise your shutter speed up a little bit higher than what you would typically shoot at for like a natural real world motion blur because you don't want motion blur when you're doing green screen because what happens is you get green in between those frames when the artist is moving. And if you look at the performance in this music video really, really close, if you just pixel peep a little bit, you'll see in certain spots where we're doing the overhead green screen shot of him floating. When his hands kind of go on the green screen, you'll see like little green pieces in between his fingers. So if it were up to me, I would definitely up the shutter speed. I typically always do it, but I just, I don't know how I forgot. And the last and final thing that I would have done differently with this music video is when we were doing the floating shots, I would have moved him from the backdrop just to eliminate some of that green spill that we got on him. And it would have made it a lot easier to key him in post. This was something that was really difficult. I had to do a lot of fiddling with this. And in the end, I think that it turned out cool. I didn't really like that scenery either. That's something else that I would have done differently. I would have filmed that floating shot in a different location because when it was all said and done, it was a little distracting. It was a lot happening with the background of him and uh, I would have just picked a much cleaner background or a much cleaner slate or plate for that scene. But yeah, man, that's that. A lot of really good information in this behind the scenes. If you've learned anything that's helped you at all, this inspired you, make sure to drop this video a like. And if you guys want to do me another favor, it's going to be linked down to the music video down in the description below. Make sure you guys go check out the music video, drop it a like, drop it a comment, show my boy Jimmy Z some love. Also, make sure you guys check out Storyblocks because that is the place to go for any stock asset that you might need for an upcoming project. Highly recommend it. Use my link down in the description below. But yeah, enough rambling. With that being said, we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.